Welcome back to Java for Beginners. In this lesson, I'll be covering arrays. I assume that you have listened to my earlier six videos, which includes installing Java, compiling and running an application, and learning the basic programming syntax. The objective of this lesson are arrays, one and two dimensional arrays. So what is an array? An array is a collection of variables of the same type. Arrays can have one or more dimensions. Arrays are convenient for holding related variables. For example, daily closing stock prices. An array is a group of variables of the same data type and referred to by a common name, by one name. Why do you need an array? For example, if you want to store stock prices for 30 days, you will have to declare 30 variables. To handle such a situation, you need an array. You can store all the 30 values in one variable, in one array. Arrays also allow you to organize data in such a way that it can be easily accessed and manipulated. For example, if closing stock prices for March 2010 are stored in an array, it is easy to compute the average stock prices for that month in about less than five lines of code. Also, data stored in an array can be easily sorted or searched. Here is a quick syntax for creating an array, creating a one-dimensional array. Type is the base type, the type of data that the array will hold, for example, double in this case. The size of the array is basically the number of elements the array will hold. The new keyword builds an array and allocates the required memory, in this example, for 10 elements. Once the array is created, its length is fixed, cannot be changed, cannot be changed easily. Each item in an array is called an element. So here is the first element, the second element, etc. And each element is accessed by its numerical index. As shown in this illustration, numbering begins at zero. So the first element has an index of zero. The ninth element, for example, would therefore be accessed at index eight. In this example, we are creating an array of four elements and then assigning the values to each element. In a real world situation, you will probably read the stock prices from a database or a file. Here we are accessing the first and the third elements of the array. This is the first element, this is the third element. Keep in mind that the first element always has an index of 0 and the last element has an index of size minus 1, in this case 3, because we have four elements. If you ever use an index outside of the range, the range, the valid range is 0 to size minus 1, your program will crash. In Java's terminology, it will throw an exception. This is what you would see if you try to print or try to access the stock prices with an index of 4. Remember, the array we created earlier has a size of 4, which means that the valid indexes are 0 through 3. And if you try to run this program, you will not have a problem at compile time, but when you try running the program, it will basically give you this output. It will crash the program, and it will say exception in thread main, and it says that the type of exception is array index out of bound type. And it will tell you the line number on which the exception occurred. In my program, that occurred at line number 9. Let's take a side trip here. I want to quickly introduce you to math functions, the mathematical functions like the square root, uh, raising to a power, generating random numbers, etc. Uh, since I'll be using one of these functions in the next example. Here, the first line says how you call the square root function. How do you compute the square root of a number? You call the function by prefixing it with the name of the class. In this case, the math class. These functions, all the math functions are stored in a class called the math class. Uh, you may want to look up the documentation to see what all other functions are available in the class. So here is the square root function 
square root of a, a is 16, so it will give you 4. The second one, b raised to the third power, b cubed, which will be 64. And the third function is interesting. That's one I'm going to be using in my next example. The function is called random. It will generate a random number between 0 and 1. So in this case, uh, that's what I got. If you run the same example, most likely the outcome is going to be different. It will be a different random number that you will get. If I call the same function again, I'll get yet another random number. That's the purpose of this function. Here is an example of how you could use arrays with loops. I am creating an array with 30 elements. In this case, it is going to hold stock prices for March 2010. And in this case, rather than read them from a file or get them from a database, I am just going to create the stock prices by using random numbers. Remember the random function would give me a number between 0 and 10 and I multiply it with 30 and uh, add 10 to it. So I am going to get my prices somewhere between 10 and 40. Then if I wanted to print all the stock prices, all the 30 stock prices, I can just use a for loop here which, would, which starts at 0 and, and stops at stock prices dot length minus 1. Uh, since it says i less than that. The length field for the stock prices, the array variable, will always know what the dimension of that uh, array is. In this case it will know that it is 30. So whenever you are working with an array and using a for loop to look at all the elements of an array, your for loop would typically look like this. You will always start at 0 because the first element has an index of 0 and the last element has an index of length minus 1. So this will print all the stock prices, the 30 stock prices that you have stored in that array. Creating a 2D array. So in this case you have two pairs of square brackets and you're going to say that the array has five columns and four rows if you want to think in terms of a table. And uh, I'm going to use this array to, st to store test scores for five tests and for four students such that I should be able to store or retrieve a score for any student for any given test very quickly. So for example these are the data that I have stored in that array and now if I want to know what is Linda's score on test number four I say system.out.println mat which is the array the first index is three the second index is two the first index is three is referring to test 4, the column number 4. The second index of 2 is referring to student number 3, Linda, and it will return this output for me. So that was a quick introduction to arrays. What is next? I got two more topics coming up in this series. The next one is on classes. How do you create classes in Java and how do you think in terms of objects? And I have one more lesson after that on applets. Please visit my website and if you register you get additional resources, exercises to reinforce the concepts that you have learned in these lessons and you will also get the solution to these exercises so you know whether you got the answers right or not.